How are we boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? I just thought I'd give you a little quick rundown on the life and times of Nario Katomi Boy, otherwise known as Turkana Boy. So this 1.6 million year old poor little homo ergaster child was found on the banks of the Nario Katomi River near Lake Turkana. You can see where the names come from in northern Kenya. In 1984, by Kamoya Kimyu, hopefully the right pronunciation. Luckily for us, the fact that Nario Katoma boy's skeleton sank into the sediments of the river slash lake preserved him excellently and allowed us to study his species. The reason why Nario Katoma boy is so special is because he is the most complete Homo erectus specimen to ever have been found. His skeleton comprises of 108 bones in total. And because we have such a good picture of what he looked like, it allowed scientists to understand the growth rates, the measurements, and the general morphology of Homo erectus a lot better than they had previously known. The reason that we think Nario Katomi boy is a boy, in fact, is because of his pelvis, which is how many skeletons are sexed. And that is because the angle of the sciatic notch in males is generally more sort of v-shaped and more acute opposed to that of the female sciatic notch which is generally wider and more u-shaped luckily for paleoanthropologists only a humerus and his fingers and feet were missing which is lovely now as for the age of this poor individual we're not quite sure there are sources saying that he was between 7 and 11 other people say 11 to 13, other people say he could have been up to 15 years old, but it was later estimated that he was likely around 8 years old at the time of his death. But who really knows? He would have been about 5 foot 3 when he died, possibly having not obviously had the chance to grow to a full adult size, but he would have reached about 6 foot as an adult. And he would have weighed about 68 kilograms or 150 pounds. And they were one of the first homos to look more anatomically modern like us than had previously existed in the fact that they had quite long limbs they were quite tall slender walked upright had larger brains kind of in between homo habilis and us some people say at the kind of beginnings of their existence about 1.9 million years ago their brains averaged at about 900 centimeters cubed and by their extinction 200,000 years ago it had expanded to about 1,200 centimeters. The brain case of Narakotomi boy was about 880 centimeters squared to be precise because as I said before mother nature favors a growing brain. He does feature quite a few morphologically archaic characteristics such as a sloping forehead, no jawline or chin, and very strong brow ridges. But physically, he looked like this. I feel like that if if you saw that person on a tube today, you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily question whether they were part of our species or not, you know? Poor Nario Katobi boy, not only had a diseased mandible but showed lumbar disc herniation which likely happened upon his death but obviously we can't know for sure. The gum disease that Nario Katomi boy suffered likely began with an infection of his molar which appears to have spread throughout his gum and likely ended up causing him septicemia. However we don't know, his death could have been an accident, it could have been septicemia, who knows. Essentially the general theme of this video is that we we know nothing about this boy and he lived and he died, that's pretty much all there is to know. <laughs> so that was my little roundup of Nairo Katomi boy. I'm going to be doing a little series on different well-known human skeletons. So hopefully that's going to be fun. I hope that was informational and you got some basic knowledge from that. See you at some point in the next couple of weeks probably. Cheers. Erectuses, erecti, erectus. Whatever the plural may be, I don't know anymore. I've lost the plot. Anyway. <laughs>